Ripple Artifacts, a new laptop from a new brand. But is Ripple a strong enough contender to make enough waves in the laptop market of Nepal? With cheaper price tags and competitive specifications, Ripple has surely got the basics right. But in order to hit that very price point, did Ripple cut down any corners? In this video, we will talk about the Ripple Artifacts and how it performs in the real world. And does it justify its asking price? If you haven't seen our unboxing and initial impression video, you can find that on the top right corner. I'm Rupesh Lehu from Technicenter.com and without any further delay, let's start the review of Ripple Artifacts. Artifact is a gaming laptop that does look seemingly good and is marketed as an entry-level gaming laptop. The laptop comes with 4 cores Intel i5 10 Gen processor, Nvidia GeForce GTX 1650 Ti graphics card. The overall design of the laptop and the build quality looks sturdy and does not have any sharp corners or edges. The laptop has a 15.6 inches of Full HD display, 3 USB ports, 1 USB Type-C port, 1X mini display port and 1 HDMI port. The laptop weighs around 1.85 kg which is light than most of the gaming laptops available in the market. Along with that, the laptop is not very much different than other 15-inch laptops available in the market, at least on the surface. So let's dig deeper. In terms of accessories, there is only a charging adapter and its connector that comes with the laptop. If you are into what is, the charger is rated at 120W and uses a barrel-style connector. Given the price point, a USB Type-C charging port would have been great. There's a 720p webcam above the screen which gets the job done. The quality is above average given there's enough light and for the most part should suffice you. But the lack of Windows Hello support is kind of a bummer. What I like though is the software feature which lets you turn the camera off when you don't need it by simply pressing the Fn and F10 keys. The integrated microphone does a decent job at recording the audio. And if you are not in a mission to record a podcast right on the laptop, there is nothing much to crib about. And it does cut down some amount of background noise as well. Ripple has added a support for Sound Blaster X G6 7.1 which is a discrete amp that lets you balance your headphone and microphone audio. This might be a welcome feature for some audiophiles and avid gamers who are big time into streaming. While we are on the topic of audio, there is a 3.5mm headphone and a microphone jack. The keyboard gets RGB lighting and it illuminates all the keys evenly through the keycaps. The keys aren't individually lit and neither does it get different zones of lighting. What it gets to is the ability to choose a backlight color of your preference which can be done through the control center application. The RGB backlight has got 4 levels of brightness adjustment using the function and the plus minus keys. The typing experience is great but I kind of have mixed feelings about it. The keyboard is good for gaming and typing as well but some people prefer this chiclet style keyboard and it can be a personal preference. But for me, I think I'm spoiled having used mechanical desktop keyboards. The deck flex is notable but the ample key travel and evenly spaced out keys make up for that. This is a chiclet style keyboard and the tactile feedback isn't what you get with a mechanical keyboard. But it is doable and should serve you well for your gaming sessions. The keys are a little mushy to my liking but the typing feels pretty natural and won't take you long to get used to them. The touchpad is average in size and it is smooth. It gets Windows precision drivers and is responsive to touches and sudden gestures. Other than that, the buttons are clickable and have a satisfying click to them. The palm rejection is quite good but sometimes you do notice that while gaming as it registers accidental touches. Not something to complain about as you can easily turn it off by pressing Fn and F1 key. The Ripple Artifact boasts a 15.6 inch IPS display with a 144Hz refresh rate and a 2 millisecond response time. Though the thinner bezels make the appearance sleek, a 16 to 9 aspect ratio seems a little dated. But with a resolution of 1920x1080 Full HD display which peaks at 305 nits of brightness, the outdoor visibility is average and the viewing angles are great and there is no color shift or distortion to it. It isn't the most color accurate display you would ever find on a laptop, so if your work includes color grading and something close, you would definitely be needing an external monitor. The 144Hz display feels smooth and the 2 millisecond latency gives you a bit of advantage in gaming sessions. Regardless, the 8-bit display produces some good colors and has a good amount of contrast and saturation to it. For everything else, it is an excellent panel. 
Given the thermals are enticing, it would be no surprise if you were to pick this laptop for your editing uses. I tried using Premiere Pro and After Effects to edit one of my videos on it and on top of that, I tried to test the playback and render an animated video on After Effects. From what I have experienced, in the case of Premiere Pro, the playback is usable and smooth while you put the clips onto the timeline. But as soon as you add effects and grades, the playback starts to lag and it is kind of unusable at some point. What I would say is it is great for video editing for beginners and even the intermediate ones who are good and comfortable with the proxy workflow. But for professional users, you should be looking at higher-end laptops that Ripple offers. In the case of After Effects, the playback was normal when you put it on the quarter resolution while doing the playback back, which I mostly do even on my personal editing computer. The load was handled quite well by this laptop and the final video was rendered in about 18 minutes 30 seconds which is quite good. The laptop heats up quite a lot while editing because of the heavy load on the CPU though the CPU uses never cross 70% on my users except for rendering. The gaming performance on this device is average. Among the few games that we tested, Dota 2, Counter-Strike and Valorant were the top dogs. The average frame rate for Dota 2 was around 100 FPS with an average low frame rate of 50 FPS to an average high frame rate of 120 FPS. In the case of Counter-Strike, the average frame rate was around 90 FPS with average low and high frame rate of 60 and 130 FPS respectively. Valorant ran surprisingly smoothly on the laptop even on the high settings. The average frame rate reaching around 150 FPS with an average low and high frame rate of around 80 and 200 FPS. So for the gaming category, the performance justifies the specs and its pricing. But the fans run at maximum speeds during the gaming sessions and you can easily feel the warmth on your fingers. The average gaming temperature which we noted while gaming was around 80 degrees Celsius, which is very hot but the performance was not affected with it. However, we noticed a few frame drops and lags in extreme long hour gaming sessions. But I would recommend using an external cooler while using this laptop for extreme gaming sessions. As the company claimed the artifacts to be the best entry-level gaming laptop, laptop, we decided to put this laptop through some of the extreme situations that we could come up with. We played games all day and rendered heavy files on it to get a gist of the real-world performance of this laptop. It seems Ripple's claim weren't false as the artifact performed just as expected from a laptop from this segment. But there's a limit to everything and Artifacts is no other exception. As the gameplay time increases above 3 to 4 hours of continuous uses, we did face some amount of lags, mostly during the intense moments when the battle is happening or there's a lot of thing going on the frame, the laptop freezes for a while. The same holds for video rendering too. This means, as long as the temperature is in check, the laptop performs like a champ. But as the temperature increases, the artifact struggles to maintain its peak performance. After that, we did some benchmarking tests to test out the numbers and compare it with the other offerings in the market. To test out the overall CPU, GPU and other performances of the laptop, we ran some benchmarks like Passmark, Geekbench 5, Geeks 3D for Mark, Novabench, Cinebench, Heaven, and put the GPU to extreme stress test as well. While the laptop held pretty well throughout, the 10 gen Intel CPU falls short in the multi-core performance. While all these numbers do seem overwhelming to decode, what it implies is that the 2.5 GHz clock speed fails somewhere in the territory of the 7 gen Intel Core i7 chipset. An 11 gen chipset would have done wonders but it would have added hefty sum to the price tag as well. So it is kind of like a fair trade-off. It is good to see that Ripple hasn't cheaped out any other components. On the GPU front, Nvidia GTX 1650 Ti isn't something that will blow your mind. But for the price, it is a bargain. But it lacks tensor cores or ray tracing that the superior RTX 2000 series packs. And when you start gaming or do any sort of heavy works, the temperatures start to rise a lot. One noticeable issue is that even on the idle conditions, the temperature was about 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. While running Geek 3D's Farmark GPU stress test for about 10 minutes, the maximum temperature we noticed was 79 degrees Celsius. So gaming or not, we don't suggest you keeping it on your lap if you intend on doing anything taxing. The speaker on this device is quite good with decent audio quality and the audio on this device gets quite louder as well. They lag the low end thumb but get reasonably loud, but it is good enough for your multimedia consumption and work or study from home scenario.
And for legit gamers out there, do use a headphone as the fans crank up and might be bothersome to you. A ripple claims the artifact can give you 12 hours of battery life. But during our testing, we got a maximum of 5 hours of battery life, which was too in low performance mode. With the brightness kept at 40%, the keyboard lighting turned off, and the fans running at minimum speed possible. This fault could be with our review unit though, because most of the products that we get for review are not the retail ones. But regardless, 4 to 5 hours of battery life is what we got during our test. Ripple offers customization options, not only with the RTFX but with other laptops as well. If there's some upgrades that you want to do to the system without voiding the warranty, a Ripple offers you different RAM, storage and other configurations depending on the model you choose. Though this might be a tiny thing to some, but keeping into account the perks of having a custom built laptop that suits your workflow, there's nothing quite like it. Ripple is offering 2 years of warranty on their hardware components and lifetime technical support. For more details, you can visit their website www.rippledevice.com. When it comes to a good brand image, it all boils down to the after-sale service they provide. And having nailed the warranty and technical support, what remains for Ripple is the repairs. Regarding the maintenance of the laptop, it should be pretty easy as Ripple is located in New Banishir, Kathmandu, which makes it well within your reach and claiming the warranty a lot easier. So now comes the main part. How is the laptop in overall? I have been using this laptop for the past few weeks now for my daily day-to-day -day tasks to editings and extreme lockdown gaming sessions. The laptop has held up quite well. For the price it is launched at, it justifies itself on the grounds of specifications and also on the performance it delivers. The only issue that we noticed in this laptop is the heating as it gets quite hot during the extreme uses. In light to moderate uses, the thermals are well managed and the fans do take good care for them, though it is a bit noisy in most cases. The build quality is quite sturdy. The screen though Full HD, it is quite good and smooth. The ergonomics is good, the weight is well balanced as compared to other gaming laptops, be it everyday task or gaming, it handles everything that you throw at it. My only gripe with the Ripple Artifacts is the thermals. I would definitely recommend using an external cooler for heavy users. Being a local manufacturer, the after sale service shouldn't be an issue. And for the price tag of Rs 1,16,000 that it is offered at, you can't go wrong with the Ripple Artifacts. So if you are in the market in need of an entry level gaming laptop, you know where to look at. Since Ripple is just one month old brand, as of now, we saw a lot of rumors buzzing around the internet, so we took it on us to ask Ripple some of the questions you might have on your mind. When we reached out to Ripple, the first question that came up in our minds is what affects Ripple's pricing if they assemble it here themselves. To which Ripple said, the main driving force behind their amazing products is local production, as they don't have to pay up 35% in import taxes that other manufacturers do. They have that liberty as the production takes place right here in Nepal. Secondly, the concerns about the quality. And Ripple says, all the components were tested before assembly. And once assembled, all laptops go through 24 hours of Prime 95 blend test and 3D mark for testing. Lastly, we asked Ripple their thoughts on the research and development as it differentiates one products from others. To answer that, Ripple said that they are a part of a global network of OEMs, basically companies that collaborate not only to match the competition but also beat them. Hope that answers most of your questions. If you have any other queries, do let us know in the comment section below. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, do like, share, comment and subscribe and do hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a cool video. Thank you for watching. Have a great time.